Hi, this is Greg from Structure Toolkit, and in this video, we're going to be going through the WinLoads module. The WinLoads module can be found under the Wind section in the desktop, where it can be used to calculate the wind pressures on a building in eight cardinal directions in accordance with ASNZS 1170.2. These wind pressures can then be used in a variety of the design modules, such as roof beams, wall tires, or mullions and can also be used in analysis for portal frames and the like. So to get started, we'll open up a wind loads module. What we will want to get out of this module is our design wind pressures for each direction and also the ratio of serviceability ultimate, which we will use for our deflections. The first step of this is determining our site wind speed in accordance with equation 2.2 of the wind code. To get there, we're going to need to input some site-specific parameters. The first section we'll deal with is our site's location. This drop-down gives a list of capital cities, important locations, which correlate to a specific region from the map found in the standard, and we also get options to pick the region directly. For this part, the New Zealand regions are also included. The last option is then other, where the region and subregion can then be manually chosen from additional inputs provided, as we can see here. For our example, we'll set it as Melbourne, which will put us in region A5. This input will be used to calculate our MD directional multiplier, MC climate change multiplier, and also used to determine our regional wind speeds. The next section is determining the importance level and design life of our structure. Recommendations on which importance level to pick are outlined in 1170.0 Appendix F. For our example, we'll say we're designing a standard house, so we will pick an importance level of 2, and so we'll leave it as it is. Our design life for our house will be 50 years, which is typical for a standard building. Further information on this can also be found in Appendix F of 1170.0. Using these two inputs, an annual probability of exceedance will be determined from 1170.0, table F2, being 1 in 500 years in our case. Next, we need to decide on an APE for serviceability. Appendix C of 1170.0 recommends 1 in 25 years, so we'll go with that. Using these parameters, an ultimate and serviceability regional wind speed will be determined, as we can see below. Alternatively, we could specify a custom importance level and use our own APE. For the design working life, we can also use the NCC's APE values. In the section underneath the design wind speed, we get our wind speed and pressure summarized in the eight directions, taking the maximum wind speed in the direction of a 90 degree arc. We'll come back to this table as it is the table below which tabulates how each wind speed and pressure is determined in the eight cardinal directions. The first input in this table we need to specify is our average height of the building. We'll have it be around five meters. We'll then need to choose our terrain category for each direction. Section 4.2.1 of 1170.2 has details on how to pick a terrain category and also how to find an average category in section 4.2.3. The terrain changes module can be used if needed to also help with determining this. For a house that's in the middle of a suburban area, this will typically result in a category of three in all directions. And for our example, we'll leave it as that. These two inputs will then determine the MZCAT terrain slash height multiplier. Something to note here though is that if the site's region is A0, the standard specifies that the MZCAT must be determined based on a terrain category of 2 up to a height of 100 meters and equal to 1.24 above that up to 200. This means that even if you have a standard building in the middle of a country town, that would normally result in a terrain category of 3 the resultant MZCAT will still be based on a terrain category of 2. The final two inputs are the shielding and topographic multipliers. Both these multipliers are based on formulas from the standard. The terrain changes module also has tabs on both of these multipliers to help calculate if needed. They should be fairly straightforward to use if you have the standard next to you, with the relevant diagrams for each input. For our example, we'll have a shielding of 0.9 in all directions and leave the MT as 1. 
The site wind speed to the right is then calculated, but something we can see is a few of the directions are read and set as 30 meters a second. This is due to the velocity lower limit set by the standard in clause 2.3 being in 30 meters a second. To the right we can see the wind speed without the lower limit being 26.9 in this case. With our site winds calculated, they then need to be converted into a wind pressure for each direction, which is done with equation 2.41 from the standard, having been derived from Bernoulli's principle. It should be noted that the aerodynamic shape and dynamic response factors haven't been applied here. The aerodynamic shape factor is applied later on in designs, since this value is usually member specific. For example, a roof beam will typically have a different factor to that of a wall type. We can then see each direction's ultimate wind pressure. The serviceability pressure is then this value multiplied by the serviceability to ultimate ratio. This ratio can be quickly worked out by taking advantage of the fact that the site wind speed is a linear equation. And so all we need to do is take the ratio of the serviceability and ultimate regional wind speed and square it to account for the wind pressure conversion. So in our case, 37 divided by 45 to the power of 2 equals 0.676, which is 0.68. If you're still unsure about this conversion, you can try applying the serviceability regional wind speed to the site wind speed and pressure equations yourself, and you will find you'll arrive at the same answer. There's also an option to the side to use a manual calculation of the MZ value. As the MZ value by default is calculated and interpolated using the height of the structure and terrain category. And if we turn it on here, scroll down, as we can see a new table will appear below, which will allow you to input manual MZ values. For our example, we'll use the standard table. The final part of this module is the summary tables above, where each direction is taken as the maximum wind speed and pressure using a 90 degree wedge in the defined direction, or 45 degrees each side. We can now use these pressure values in a design, and to show how this is done, we'll apply it to a roof beam. In our case, we'll take the maximum wind pressure of 0.68 kPa, and then also the serviceability ratio of 0.68. So we'll now open up a roof beam. And in here, we have a few areas we'll want to look at for wind. The first part is at the top right of the loading section, where we can put our ratio in, which in this case already happens to be our 0.68. We also have an option for applying the area reduction factor Ka, which will reduce the external component of the wind force. Next we have the wind UDL section, where we can put in our pressure of 0.68. We'll leave our CPE and CPI values as they are. Finally, if for some reason we wanted to manually input a wind point load, we could use this cell to calculate it using our pressure multiplied by the load area. That about covers everything for using the wind loads modeling toolkit. Feel free to check out our website and our other videos for more tutorials and help with using this software. If you have any questions, please contact our support team via email or by calling us. Thanks for watching.